Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I am planting out the garden. I was originally going to do this yesterday, but we were supposed to have hail today and then it magically just disappeared, kind of like how all Kansas weather is. And I actually trusted the weather people because if you didn't know, the very first year I started a garden, I planted out my entire garden and the next day it got totaled out by hail. So I just did not want that reoccurrence. So I went ahead and just held off. I've been watching the weather for a few days and I'm gonna go ahead and plant. Today is a perfect day to do so. If you are transplanting out plants, the best time to do it is in the morning afternoon or an overcast day like this um, just so the plants can get a little bit more established without the heat or like the very strong sun so i'm going to try to get everything knocked out planted today i have a bunch of starts with uh, peppers and tomatoes i'm currently just spacing everything out right now but once i go through and um get all of my starts planted i'm going to go through and direct sow everything i need to direct sow as well so i'm probably going to be out here for a few hours uh, to get things planted. So our last expectant frost was April 16th and we are what, May 3rd at this point and it's because we had a little fluke. I like to wait until um, we are averaging in the 50s and 60s to get any type of like peppers planted. I probably could have done this a few days ago but again we've had this hail <laughs> risk um, in the forecast and I really just wasn't not planning on risking all of my hard work on some hail. I'm gonna get everything spaced out, I think first, and I'm gonna go through and just plant everything up. So I am planting three different types, or no, I'm planting four different types of tomatoes this year. I've traditionally done like plain Romas in the past, but this year I have Supremos and a Plum Regal, which are both paste varieties um, that are just hybrids that are supposed to be like higher producing, stuff like that. So really interested in these two. And then I'm doing San Morzano and then also my pink Bumblebee Cherry. So my little A-frame trellis I have right here, I'm actually going to be planting some San Morzanos on, then also my two arches behind me. I'm also going to be planting my indeterminates over there, but all of my determinate paste varieties are going to be going where my tomato cages are. So I'm actually proud of myself when it comes to my tomato starts this year. This is the largest one got. This is one of my indeterminates, so it will be like a little bit bigger than some of the others, but Man, tomato starts. I would even start my tomatoes probably a whole week or two after when I did this year. So from now on, I'll probably just plan to plant them out like the third week of March, if not like the very last week of March, just because tomatoes are those one, it's like that one crop that's honestly just a pain in the butt to keep inside and they grow so fast. It's definitely time to get these in the ground. If they would have been inside any longer i honestly would have had to transplant i'm having just a little bit of yellowing going on and i mean they honestly oh goodness what was that so with this little a-frame trellis what i'm going to be doing is planting on each corner and allowing these plants to kind of fill out the entire space as they go so i'm really really excited about this little area here i did have all of these sectioned out by variety and Throughout my period of hardening them off outside, I have stopped all that. Man, these San Morzanos look just phenomenal. They by far are my best looking tomato start. Oh my gosh, I just keep picking up more and more cherries. Woo, that Supremo looks beautiful. So on my two arches right here, I'm actually going to be doing some of my indeterminates. I'm doing cherries on that front one and I'm doing San Morzano's over here. But like, look how beautiful that little start is. I'm gonna do two on each side of the trellis here. Nope, that's cherry. Where's my other San Morzano? Oops, cherry. I bet this is it, my tallest one. Yep. All right. I think I have one extra tomato plant. I'll just keep that in downstairs as like a little precautionary plant. Never know when something might happen to one. It's always nice to have a good backup. Those are where all my main plants are going and the rest are kind of filler plants outside of loofahs. 
My loofahs look so pretty. One of the biggest questions I got last year was how many loofah plants did I plant because this whole 20 foot trellis was just filled with loofahs and I planted one on each side right here and right here. And that is exactly where they are gonna go again this year. I mean, I honestly had what, like 50 dried loofahs, if not more. Um, I gifted a bunch of them away. If I didn't gift a bunch of them away, I probably would have plenty where I wouldn't need to grow it. But honestly, growing loofah is so much fun and gifting them is like even funner. So I think what I'm going to do is get all of my peppers and tomatoes planted and the loofahs I just showed you guys. And then I'm gonna go through and see exactly where I wanna lay out some of my other plants. So I have a bunch of zinnias, nasturtiums, marigolds, thyme. I have some straw flowers. I'm gonna hand seed some more uh, peppers right through here. I do know that. White sage, calendula. I have this really cool flower called like a drumstick flower. I have some oregano, some dill. Um, but I'm gonna plant all of these main plants first. Then I'm gonna see where my gaps are. I kind of know exactly where I'm planting everything, but some of like these extras, like all of my zinnias and like calendula, a lot of my flowers are going to be going in pots around a lot of my uh, garden beds. <laughs> this is honestly like one of my favorite days of the entire year. It's so much hard work, but it's definitely the start of the growing season, which I just, I love. I can't believe we're already here to be completely honest. I feel like this entire year has really, really flown by. Ooh, there is a grub. I'm going to collect grubs while I'm at it for the chickens. Where, ooh, hold on. I guess we will see how many grubs I collect. I haven't collected that many. So a few years ago, I actually had a problem with grubs in the garden and I sprayed beneficial nematodes. And last year was really great as far as not really having an issue with them. Anytime I come across a grub though, I go ahead and pull it out of the soil. And then that way I just give it to my chickens. It's a good protein source for them and they are a pest for your garden. So if you see them, just pick them out. I've gotten, gotten a lot better about just picking out grubs and not worrying about bugs on my hands, which is something I used to not really like or care about, but they just kind of leave you alone. All right, the first plant is in. Ooh, baby. So I really like these, oh, here I am thinking I'm still planting a small pot. So I really like these five inch pots from Bootstrap Farmer if I have to do any type of up potting, which I did end up having to up pot most of these peppers. Um, I probably should have up potted them a little sooner, but my whole plan was to not do any type of up potting this year. But when I do have to up pot, I really, really love these five inch pots. I'm able to get the plants out really easy and they're also really, really sturdy. Um, I think they're just a really good option for any type of big plants because you can carry them really easily. Ah, oh, this is making my little heart happy. They look so small once you get them planted. So when you go to take a plant out of one of these bigger pots, you can see they're really stiff, but if you just flip it upside down, there's this little hole right here. You just poke your finger through and it pops right out. So on this side, I have paprikas and bell peppers. And then on this side, I have cayennes, jalapenos, and a few serranos. This is actually the first year, um, and I think like the last two or three years, I'm not planting any banana peppers. And it's simply because I have so many that are preserved up in my basement that I was pretty sure I could skip bananas this year completely. Um, I mean, I had such an overflow of abundance last year. And the only way we really use like pickled banana peppers is mostly on pizzas. So I think I'll be completely content for the next year. Good on nachos too. Um, but it's one of those things where since I have more of a limited space, even though I do have a bigger garden for like a suburban backyard. Um, I still have limited space for everything that I could potentially want to grow or grow. And I figured I could use that space a little better this year than just planting something I truly didn't need. Planting days is where a lot of that planning really pays off because you're just, you're able to go through and just plant. You already know exactly how much is gonna fit in that space, where they're going to sit at. You're not playing a guessing game with where things are gonna go. Like planning can take so much. Oh my gosh, those roots are insane. Um, planning can take so long, but it really does just help out this entire springtime. So if you're bored 
during winter, plan your garden. Unfortunately, this year jalapenos for some reason just gave me one hell of a time germinating. So I ended up buying a new pack of seeds and I have more started, but right now I only have four jalapeno plants and I really wanted to have like minimum six to eight. So right here, like these little two sections, I'm going to be uh, planting just a few more peppers and then that way I'll get a few waves. All right, <clears throat> so now that I got everything planted, I'm gonna go through and throw some stakes up around each plant. I'm gonna mulch it all just a little bit more to top things off since I like disturbed everything. And then I'm going to give a good water and we'll move on to the next thing. Staking plants for me is definitely necessary with Kansas wind. You really just don't have the option if you don't want your plants to flop over. I won't tie these to the stakes. Um, I've never really found that I need to do that for peppers, but having them near them really just helps support everything as they're continuing growing up. These peppers will live in my garden until sometime in October when the frost kills them off. So that's why I love peppers just because they stay for so long. Staking plants early on, I personally like to do that way. I'm not disturbing any type of roots either. The roots have the freedom to kind of do what they want. Ow. Let's hope we don't get a wind gust as I'm trying to lay this mulch. When I mulch, I like to use this easy straw here. I always get questions on it. So I actually finally saw it at another store other than Lowe's this week. I've only ever been able to find it at Lowe's, but I noticed that our Menards actually had it. And Menards had it for like two to $3 cheaper for bags. So that was really cool to see. I really like it because it's 99% weed free. It's really easy to use. If you don't want to purchase something like this, um, I also really love to use grass clippings to mulch. Grass clippings though, you have to typically re-mulch pretty often. Pretty much every week that you're mowing, you need to be topping your beds. That grass really just decomposes really fast. Whew, it's all right. Do you guys see how beautiful this chamomile is? And then my little, I believe is Goldie Sunflower is doing absolutely phenomenal. So I am planting tomatoes over here. This is a pink bumblebee cherry tomato variety. I love this variety. It's gorgeous. It's so beautiful. So pretty much if you haven't heard at this point, I think this is the most known information about tomatoes out there. You wanna plant as deep as you possibly can. These little hairs that are on the stem will continue to grow roots. This is one of the few plants that will do this. Um, so you do wanna kinda of dig deeper down when it comes to planting the tomatoes. These are cherries, so I don't have to, I mean, they're pretty short. So we're going to be planting these guys about 24 inches apart. These get very, very bushy. They go crazy. I found that four plants last year was perfect for this little archway. So I just wanted to kind of keep that alive. Beautiful. All right. This is like a, this is like my most awkward area to try to plant anything. Man, these tomatoes are going to be so happy. <laughs> I feel like this area right here is going to be a little bit trickier just because I have all these onions planted. So it's not like I can like sit over there. <laughs> this is a really awkward angle to be trying to dig a hole. So you can see how this tomato plant here is starting to yellow, like in the middle of the leaves, it's starting to yellow at the bottom. Like this plant, these roots are gonna be crazy. I just know it. Not as bad as I was expecting, but 
definitely still ready to be transplanted. I don't know if you guys have ever heard me talk about this or not, but if it wasn't for tomato products, I don't know if I would grow tomatoes, to be honest, and they take up a third of my garden, which is one of those things that kind of surprises people. I don't really enjoy growing tomatoes. They are more of just a crop that you really have to keep tabs on. You gotta work with quite often. That's, why, that's one reason why I do plant a lot of determinate varieties. So an indeterminate and a determinate. So an indeterminate tomato, which is these San Morzanos and my cherries, they will continue to grow to an indeterminate height. So they will just keep growing throughout the entire summer. A determinate plant is more of that bush variety and they will grow to be about a certain height and then they will stop. So a lot of my Roma varieties will get about like four to five feet tall and then they typically stop growing. Um, also with more of a bush variety, you don't want to be doing as much pruning because the more pruning you do, the less fruit you're actually going to get uh, on those plants. So that's another reason why I really like the determinates. You can get a little bit more disease just because if you don't keep up with it, like I still prune stuff off, but I'm a lot more hands off when it comes to determinates versus indeterminates. This will be my third year growing indeterminate varieties. So it's my sixth year growing determinate varieties. I didn't start playing around with indeterminates until about like halfway through growing tomatoes. And I really like the indeterminates for being able to trellis them and everything, but they are a lot more upkeep to make sure your plants just don't get like absolutely wild and crazy. They grow so fast. Everyone has their own little preference though. I think a lot of people think I'm crazy for even using tomato cages. Um, I actually really like tomato cages. Oh my gosh. That might be the best looking root system on um, a San Morzano yet. So San Morzanos are also a um, paste variety of tomato. So you will notice that I didn't plant any type of like slicer beefsteak tomato again we are not like the biggest fresh eaters of tomatoes here i do like cherries but i have found that i personally like the flavor of a paste variety sliced up on like a sandwich versus like any type of slicing tomatoes i just find slicing tomatoes to be very watery no matter like if they're homegrown or not i just find that a paste variety just has a lot more flavor and a lot less water so I mean, that makes sense right there, why it would be a little bit more flavorful. I mean, this is all my opinion. You will have people that will completely disagree with me, and I'm sure there's going to be someone in the comments that will disagree with me on this, but I simply grow tomatoes for mostly sauce and uh, salsa. So last year, I did not have onions planted like this, and I did not think about how this was going to affect me digging holes in this trellis space because I wanted to plant them on like the inside area here. So <laughs> this is actually kind of annoying, but we're done. This is the last one going in. These are beautiful. Also, we still have only had one grub. I'm keeping tabs like this. So this year so far, especially because last year I just started picking them out of the soil. Anytime I saw them, amazing. My chickens have been having fun just jumping up and doing their thing. I don't know why all of them are in the coop right now. So while I'm over here, I'm still having a few issues. You guys can see how their feathers are still pecked out of their back. So I got this fence area to give them more space and it's been helping so much, but they are still like having a whole pecking order issue. So that's why you see the dog kennel out here. I've thrown a few birds in there to kind of give them like time outs, but I can't leave them in there overnight. So I'm trying to figure it out. They are a lovely looking bunch. They are all healthy. Um, it's nothing other than a pecking order issue, but that's something I definitely didn't really think of before getting chickens, but really, really love this fence. It's a no shock fence from Premier One. Um, it's worked really, really well. Well, speaking of, it looks like I need to refix this steak a bit. One thing I'm going to do is once a lot of my cool crops are out of that other space behind the coop here, I'm actually going to re go at, like I'm going to restructure this netting to go the other way. That way they can get other stuff. And then I can also give this space a break. That's one reason why I really like this is it's movable. 
it's not permanent, especially because we're not going to stay here forever either. This will be something I can take and go. I really wanted like a really cute, like aesthetic, like little fence to go with the coop, but I think this thing works great, especially for like what, $130? So this is one of two of my in-ground spaces. I mostly have raised beds. This will be what, the fourth year for this initial space. I typically plant all of my tomatoes here. Honestly, nothing. <laughs> too exciting is probably going to happen over this way so I'm just going to catch up with you guys once I get this whole section planted because I'm sure this is about to take me like minimum 30 minutes all right so just like the peppers I am going to quickly remulch everything just a little bit and then give everything a good water throw these girls some weeds entertain them a bit telling you having chickens has been like one of the best additions to this space i got them last year in april and pretty much anything that needs to be ripped out of the garden like mine is beans a tomato plant i mean they take care of so much i haven't decided or not but i have enough space where if i plant two sunflowers like big ones right here it would also work this bed right here though is going to be like a whole flower sunflower bed and this might be the most excited I am about a bed this year. So right here I'm just planting out a little bit of thyme. I had thyme in here two years ago and I honestly can't remember what happened to it but last year I had didn't have any thyme in my garden whatsoever um, and I kind of missed having fresh thyme. I have dried thyme still from two years ago that I dried but I really like the option of having fresh herbs too so we're gonna put these all right here. Beautiful. Where's my mulch? I'm not gonna mulch like crazy right here just because these are itty bitty little guys, but I do wanna make sure that this soil here doesn't really dry out. Thyme is one of those that will just, it will just keep growing, it spreads really easily. I was finding thyme everywhere. That's why I'm really shocked. I really don't have any in the garden because it seeded itself and I did have it in multiple spots. Well, I'm not trying to ruin your guys' sunbathing party. <laughs> so over here I am going to go ahead and plant out a few of my marigolds. I'm not putting them in between every tomato plant just because be a lot of marigolds I would have to plant but I do like to have them around soil blocks. It makes it so much easier to plant out stuff. So here in this front like I mentioned I want to make it really symmetrical so I have to be thinking about where everything's going. So since I have this volunteer chamomile and then my um, Goldie honey bear, I'm obviously going to be planting another Goldie right here. But I think here in the front, I'm gonna plant some zinnias. I'm going to do nasturtiums, then plant a few other different flower varieties uh, right up front. I have a variety of nasturtium called the Alaskan variegated nasturtium. And these are so pretty when they grow out. They have like such beautiful variegation on them. So I'm gonna plant a few in each pot because I really want these to fill out and like cascade over and be really pretty. Man, these root systems are just crazy. Come on. Hopefully these transplant. Okay, I didn't realize how crazy these really got. There's a chance that these might not transplant well. Nasturtiums really don't like root disturbance and I am really disturbing these roots at the moment. Hopefully not, but always a chance. So over here, I have a bunch of fabric planters a few other planters and this is where I'm going to be planting out some more like oregano and flowers and all that. Right in front of the loofah trellis I'm going to plant more of these drumstick flowers. I love the look of these. So 
This is a new variety for my garden this year. I have never planted these, but it's supposed to be really great uh, cut flower that also is really good um, for drying. I think it'd be really nice to make some like dried floral arrangements with these, uh, especially for fall time and give them to friends and family. Maybe sell a few, I don't know. <laughs> but I really like the look of these uh, flowers. I'll like, I'll find a picture and I'll post what they look like on top of the screen. But this might add like a cute little ambiance to the loofah trellis area. Right. Some other things I have here. So I have three different zinnia varieties. I have a like regular cut and come. Again, a variety is just like a bunch of different colors. Um, then I also have a polar bear zinnia, which is a white zinnia. I have the queen orangey limes, which again are just so beautiful. I have calendula. I also am going to be planting some white sage over here. I have some dwarf straw flowers, which is another one that I really want to dry. I have oregano I need to plant. And then I also have, ooh, it was like it's on my, um, on my thing I wrote over here, it says velvet D which could be taken so wrong. Um, I have no idea what that flower is called. I'll look at my seed packet, but it's this really beautiful purple, velvety purple flower for like a cottagey garden vibe. So I'm gonna try to find space for all these over here. I do think I'm going to save this pot though for like a mammoth sunflower because that would work out perfectly for that. All right, let's see. What do I want where? That's the real question. <gasps> Ooh, okay. I am going to put this in one of my nicer fabric planters because this is white sage. And even though it's not a perennial here, I could obviously bring this inside over the winter time. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set the rest of these out. So I have three planters there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. 10 more I can plant out. So I've had cloth planters in my garden for what now six years. I've done them every single year. They are really great for little things like this, being able just to fill up little areas that you can't fit other garden beds. They aren't my favorite for the reasoning that they will dry out really fast especially with our wind here. So it is something I tend to have to water more often than like my raised beds or anything. But one way I like help prevent these areas from getting too dry is I use these terracotta stakes um, that you can put a wine bottle at the very like top of it and it'll help water your plants. I actually like to use those in all of my planters because again, we dry out really fast here with our wind and I found that those really help out. Another area I really like to use these stakes is my trellis area, uh, which we'll be doing in a second. I will be putting them out. I actually need to go grab them because I need to position them in the areas they will be when I direct sow that whole area. Oh, it's our second grub of the day. I'm honestly really shocked I have not found more. So calendula, last year I did not plant enough of it. I only had two plants. And this year I really want to have enough to be able to make like some type of skin salve with. That's been a goal of mine for a few years now. Sometimes we don't make it to our goals every year, guys. <laughs> Sometimes you don't plant enough or you think you planted enough, but in reality you really didn't plant enough. Oregano was one of those perennials that I had planted that actually died back. We got down to negative 40 as a feel like in December and it killed off, I would say like 95% of my perennial plants. I'm actually shocked that this whole area right here didn't die because a lot of my hyssop died, my lavender died, all of my oregano died. It was really sad. I was happy that my blueberry plant made it out though. Okay, so I got my loofah planted and then over here, this is what I am direct sowing. So I'm direct sowing Hal's Jumbo Cantaloupe. This is that cantaloupe that I grew bigger than my head last year and I saved the seeds. So definitely growing this again. I'm really excited about it. This is my very first year. I don't know how I've never tried to grow watermelon 
in the six years I've gardened, but this is going to be the very first year for watermelon. Um, I'm also planting the, hun the honey nut variety of butter squ uh, butternut squash. So this honey nut variety is vine bore resistant and I actually had luck growing this last year. These are like little individual size, like butternut squashes. They're a little bit more flavorful in my opinion, but I also really like them because they are about like yay big and they're perfect to like throw with some potatoes really quickly in a dinner. They just add a lot of flavor. Um, then I am really excited about this. So this is actually a hybrid variety, but I wanted to get a hybrid greenhouse variety of cucumber. Greenhouse was what I was thinking greenhouse variety of cucumber because every other cucumber I have tried, the humidity really knocks them out. And the one year I grew a hybrid that was for a greenhouse, those were the best cucumbers I've ever had. I had 200 plus off of one trellis, so I am going to give these a try. I've never tried this, but really excited about this variety. And then right here in these um, grow bags right behind me or right behind you that you can't see, I'm gonna be throwing in some okra, which I'm not a fan of okra, but I have tons of friends and family who love pickled okra, so I'm gonna grow that for them. I think I'm going to keep kind of the similar order that I did last year. So I'm gonna go loofah, honey nut squash, cantaloupe, and then last year I actually had green beans right here, but I'm gonna do um, watermelon and the cucumbers right here instead. And I have a bunch of bush bean green beans that I will be actually planting out a lot of like the, once the garlic and the onions are up, I'll be planting a lot of green beans then. Um, but this is actually the first year in a few years I haven't planted any pole varieties. Green beans gave me probably the hardest time out of anything last year, to be honest. So <laughs> hopefully this is a better year for green beans. So I've came to conclusion I really like Johnny's seeds, but I hate their seed packet. I always double check like how far apart I should plant seeds and their information is just really confusing. Even though I didn't have vine borer issues with the honey nut squash, I still had squash bugs, um, which did give me some hell. But growing squash on a trellis, I have found it to be just so much easier than the ground because you can just see all the little buggies all right, so now we're going to do cantaloupe and I'm gonna be planting like three or four of these cantaloupe plants. What I'll probably do is I'll plant cantaloupe on one side and watermelon on the other. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna do cantaloupe here, watermelon there, and then we'll do cucumbers the rest of the way down. The loofah, like I just told you guys, will go the whole way down throughout the entire season. I have found with the cantaloupe, I don't know necessarily about the watermelon, that the cantaloupe kind of stopped once it got to like that peak and it allowed everything just kind of walk through. You know, after all these years, you think me direct seeding, I would be more confident in it, but I swear every year I'm like, is the seed going to sprout? It sprouts every time. I really hope this is a good year for cucumbers. Last year, I made the mistake and I ended up buying, what were they? I don't know, they were shorter varieties of cucumber and like that's great and all, but like they did not produce the way I needed them to produce. This is a producing variety. So did I even say the name of it? Excel, Excelsior, Excel, I don't, this might be one I can't pronounce correctly. If you guys weren't around for last year, I call this trellis, Trellis Ellis. And last year it put on a show. So I'm really hoping that this year also puts on a show. Even though I'm not a big okra fan, uh, the plant is just so beautiful and if you didn't know it's actually part of the hibiscus family and it produces like a beautiful little yellow hibiscus like plant Ooh, i should look this up if you can make like hibiscus tea out of the flowers that is one thing i really want to do is get some hibiscus seeds or some hibiscus plants this year and um try to dry a bunch of hibiscus. We love hibiscus tea, and I'm really shocked that's something I've never grown before. 
me and my husband are actually thinking about um, doing a whole space up front that would be like a little tea garden, which I think would be really fun. So if you guys like have any um, varieties that are um, perennial to zone six that you love for tea, um, I would love to know. So please leave those in the comments below. Poor Kavisi, she's all sad in the window. She went outside so bad right now. Hi, honey. I love you. Yeah. So over here, I'm going to be planting one zucchini squash plant, and then I'm also planting carrots. So zucchini squash and me don't really get along. I end up getting squash vine borer. I'm able to get a good amount out of the plant, and then I just have to pull the plant. I've found that one plant is good enough, and then I'll just pull it. So I'm gonna plant one here, and then I'm also gonna plant carrots. So carrots, this is the first year I am planting a pelletized, pell, pelleted, a pelleted variety. So I chose another hybrid. This is the Nagova variety of carrots. I've done a lot of hybrids this year, mostly because I want production varieties that are going to produce. So I'm really excited about this. I've never done a pelleted variety like I just mentioned, um, but they are supposed to be a little bit easier to sow and space out. So I am excited for that. So this bed should be pretty easy. I'm just gonna put few squash seeds right in the middle here. Uh, one thing I do want to try out, they have these like vine bore traps and I need to look into buying one of those um, just to see if it would really make a difference. Because I mean, I do like zucchini squash. I don't really like to buy it either. So that's one reason why I wanted to grow it, make some zucchini bread do some kebabs, all that jazz. All right, so let's see here. I will say, just by first glance at these pelleted seeds, this is going to be 10 times easier than any traditional seed. Please, he gets so sad when I'm outside without her. She has been so good. Over the last three years, I have taught her how to come outside with me and listen. Um, I can't just like trust her to walk around and stay around, but I do have to have eyes on her, but she's pretty good at not getting in trouble most of the time. Okay, this is the garden bed I think I'm most excited about because I'm planting a bunch of different sunflower varieties. I'm gonna do some mammoth sunflowers. I have this really pretty like mixture of sunflowers. I have my goldies and I have some other tall ones. So I'm gonna get all of those planted here. Okay, so the last spot I have is just filling out the rest of these two beds here. I went ahead and did some more goldies in these corners. I planted a goldie here, and then I planted out two more paprikas and uh, two more jalapeno plants over here. So I really have like these middle portions sticking out at the moment, and I think I'm going to just put a few more flowers one thing I wanted to do over in this area in particular compared to last year is last year I had like corn and my okra off to the sides. And even though I really liked having a lot of that tallness, um, I, it kind of blocked out a lot of the airflow for the cherry tomatoes. So I wanted to plant a bunch of shorter stuff around the area where the cherries would go just to give again more space to the cherries. One thing that I'm going to do once I go in for the night is up pot any of the soil blocks. I'm gonna up pot these tomatoes just to keep everything as backups. Cause again, you just never know. I would prefer to have backups in the basement and not use them than to not have anything that I can't plant out in case like some type of weather comes or something. So I will also be saving my loofahs as well. So that is going to be tonight's project. I really don't have much left over. I planted a ton of zinnias and I knew I was not going to use them all. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with 
everything I got into the ground today. All right, guys. Well, I think that is going to conclude it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me while I planted the garden. I hope you guys enjoyed. Everything is pretty much planted. I'm sure once a lot of my seeding comes up or once I see how things are growing, I might be adding a few things. Um, but other than that, the garden is planted for 2023 and I am so excited. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.